I want to welcome everyone in particular. I want to welcome the firemen and women behind me, uh, many of them from the D.C. District. So thank you very much for your service and thank you for taking the time out of your day to be here. Uh, I want to welcome the um, International Association of Firefighters, the National Volunteer Fire Council, the International Association of Fire Chiefs, my senator, Senator Chuck Schumer, uh, Senator Menendez, Congressman uh, Pascrell, Peter King from New York, and uh, Jerry Conway. Is Jerry? Jerry's not here. Not here yet. Um, and of course, a, f a good friend of mine, Brian McQueen, a cancer survivor, a member of the New York State Board of uh, Fire Departments, Fire Chiefs, and, pa and chief of, past chief of the Whitesboro Fire Department, where I live. So thank you for making the trip here. Also, Lieutenant Mike Rund, a cancer survivor and president of the Professional Firefighters of Maryland. So thank you, everyone, for being here today. Um, we um, are here today to announce a bill that's been uh, widely talked about and I think way late in coming. We know that cancer among firemen and women is double the national average, particularly with certain types of, of cancer, uh, like non-lymphoma, uh, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And um, we're going to hear a little bit about that. Also, we know that um, the purpose of this bill is to, to, through the Center for Disease Control, to have a national registry so that we can keep track of people to develop protocols to prevent cancers, to develop different ways to, to help firemen uh, when they approach these fires. We know that there's 84,000 different chemicals, uh, many of which didn't exist 20 years ago. So uh, we're going to hear about that. I, I want to uh, begin by uh, thanking Senator Menendez for being here and invite, invite him to take the podium. Thank you, Congressman. Well, uh, thank you, Congressman. Let me uh, thank uh, my colleagues uh, in the House and the Senate, uh, as well as uh, all of the firefighters here and their leadership. Uh, we are uh, pleased to uh, join with Congressman Hanna and my good friend Congressman Bill Pascarell, who is synonymous with firefighters as well as Congressman King, and I know Congressman Connolly is on his way, uh, and to join with heroic firefighters who do so much for our communities every day. First responders are the lifeblood of our communities, and we owe them our respect uh, when they're on the job and, we need, uh, and when we need help, and we owe them our full support when they need ours. As I've always said, it defies all logic and reason to run into a burning building, but these men and women do it anyhow. They protect us 24-7, uh, regardless of holidays or weekends that many of us take for granted. They risk their lives and the health, uh, their health every time they answer the bell. And in turn, I, th I think we all feel compelled to do all we can to protect them which is why I'm proud to have stood up for them and help uh, lead the fight in Washington to pass the Sedroga Act, because the links between cancer in our 9-11 first responders and the exposure to toxins at ground zero have been well documented and discussed. And while that was an extraordinary and tragic event that continues to take lives for which we solemnly remember, there's been little attention paid to a firefighter's routine and daily exposure to dangerous toxins over the course of their entire career. Firefighters have greater risks of a series of cancers than probably any other professional group. Think, think about what's in your own home. Everything from what's in your sofa to what's stored under your kitchen sink. In a typical house fire, they all burn releasing fumes and toxins, in some cases carcinogens, into the air, imposing additional risk for the men and women who so bravely charge in to ensure our safety. That's why the Bipartisan Firefighter Cancer Registry Act, which I have introduced in the United States Senate, along with Senators Murkowski, Klobuchar, Rubio, as well as my distinguished colleague from New York, Senator Schumer, creates a voluntary registry for firefighters who develop cancer and allows doctors and researchers to track the rates, the incidence, and the trends of cancers among our firefighters. It is our hope that by studying, quantifying, and understanding the risk of cancer for firefighters, that we can develop better methods of protection, from prevention of cancer to one day finding a cure. So to every firefighter on behalf of a grateful nation, we thank you very much, uh, and you always have our back, and we're going to make sure we continue to have your back. 
I didn't, I didn't know we were rolling introductions. The distinguished senior senator from New York, soon to be the Democratic leader in the United States Senate, uh, Senator Schumer. Thank you. And I want to thank Senator Menendez for inviting me here and, Sen and Congressman Hanna, my dear friend. And I want to say, in quoting a rock and roll song, we're going to miss you when you're gone. Who sang it? I don't remember. Um, but uh, uh, thank them for their great leadership here. I'll be very brief, as well as my colleague, Senator Pascrell, uh, uh, Congressman Pascrell, Congressman King, and all the firefighters, first and foremost, led by the great, indefatigable, always working for the firefighters, and beloved in Washington, Harold Shapeberger, and um, who I just learned is from Manhattan originally, the old Yorktown area, where all the, uh, we had great German restaurants there in the old days, till all the yuppies came in and <laughs> made it a fancy neighborhood. Um, but in any case, uh, it's very important to be here. Our firefighters are like our soldiers. They're the domestic version of our soldiers. They risk their lives for our safety. The brave men and women in our armed forces in Afghanistan and Iraq risk their lives for our safety. The brave firefighters in New York and New Jersey and across the country risk their lives for our safety. And just as we exalt our soldiers, as we should, we should be exalting our firefighters in every way. And that's why all of us here worked hard to pass the Zadroga bill without the men and men behind me and women behind me. Uh, uh, it wouldn't have happened. And the fact that we have this, these great, great battalions of firefighters behind us for the registry gives me great optimism that we can make that happen as well. 9-11 brought out what everyone who fights fires knows, that there are lots of carcinogens and other things in the air that firefighters breathe in. There's a particularly bad one that's in mattresses and children's pajamas, which they used to think was a flame retardant, and now they know it isn't, and it's still there. And every time a firefighter goes into a home, it could be a couch or a mattress or children's pajamas burning and sending invisible but deadly chemicals in the air that they breathe in. So having the registry will, will, will alert us to what happens and increase our abilities across the federal government to fight these things, whether it's NIH doing the research on the cancers that are caused, whether it's some of the other agencies looking at the chemicals and why they should be banned. So I am in full support of this bill. I thank, on my side of the aisle, Senator Menendez for his great leadership here. He's always stood for firefighters. And thank my colleagues for being here. Oh, thank it's you. a rolling introduction. <laughs> the outstanding congressman from Passaic, New Jersey, and surrounding environs, <clears throat> Congressman Pascrell. Thank, thank you very much, Chuck. I want to thank everybody for being here this morning. This is a major effort on our part to create a national registry. And you'll see national registries coming forth on many, many particular diseases and uh, maladies for firefighters and everybody else. Now we're interested in those that have been diagnosed with cancer and trying to, to decide what's the best way scientifically to protect our brave firefighters and then, God forbid, something happens, what to do to make them whole again. I want to thank Representative Richard Hanna from New York, an outstanding, caring congressman. Uh, you introduced the Firefighter Cancer Registry Act, and my good friend, of course, Senator Menendez, has always been there for firefighters police officers for introducing it with Senator Murkowski. And thank you to Representative Peter King, who's always there. Uh, and thank you, Chuck, for being here today with us. We need your support. And then I want to thank General President Harold Schaitberger, the International Association. We go back 20 years, at least, and uh, for all the work you've generated in terms of support for this legislation. And then finally, thank you to the President of the Professional Firefighters of Maryland, Mike Rund, for your tireless work, and I mean that, to keep communities in Maryland safe. 
Your story reminds me of former Chief Gene Dannon's feller of the Haddon Heights Fire Department. While you two have beat the odds, we have several members of the fire service struggle with the long-term impacts of keeping our community safe. That is why we are here today to highlight the urgent need to create this registry. I'm proud to be the chairman of the Congressional Fire Services Caucus. I wore it on my sleeve. Where I could be on the front lines fighting to support the brave men and women here today and around the country. They don't just need a pat on the back. They just don't need us putting our grandchildren into the machines that they drive. It is you who put your lives on the lines, guys and gals, day in and day out to keep our community safe. So it's got to be a top priority to provide firefighters with the necessary resources to perform their jobs as safely and effectively as possible and during your reign, Harold. You've worked so hard day in and day out to do that for the 20 plus years that I've known you. In addition to ensuring that our first responders are prepared to, in advance of disasters and other emergencies, we must also ensure that they receive the necessary care after answering the call of duty. Routinely exposed to a variety of known carcinogens in chaotic and uncontrolled environments. Public health officials, we do not have a good sense of the full picture of the negative impacts of firefighters' exposure. A 2013 National Institute of Occupational Safety and Health study found that firefighters have a 14 percent increased risk of dying from cancer compared to the general population. Just think about that for a moment. This makes cancer the leading cause of a line of duty deaths among firefighters. Other studies have demonstrated statistically higher rates of multiple types of cancers in firefighters, brain cancer, leukemia, lung cancer, and kidney cancer. Despite the knowledge we've gained, many have been limited by small sample sizes in an underrepresentation of key demographic groups. The first step is to ensuring that resources are targeted appropriately is understanding the nature and the scope of the problem that we face. Developing a specialized cancer, cancer registry will provide scientists and medical professionals with detailed inter, uh, national data that will allow researchers access to information that is necessary. Improving our knowledge base on cancer and its correlation to firefighters will lead to the development of more sophisticated safety protocols and safeguards which could ultimately save lives. As long as I'm in Congress, know that I will do everything in my power to provide more resources to our local fire departments, be they career or volunteer. I'm an honor to be invited here today, and I now want to introduce a great congressman from the state of New York. We do agree on a few things, believe it or not. My good friend, Congressman well, Peter Let me just say one thing before Peter steps up. What people don't know that I know, because I'm in the House with uh, Mr. King, is that the Zendroga Act is because of Peter King. There are a lot of members who supported it, but Peter, more than any other person, led the charge to make that bill permanent. So um, every firefighter that went to that event or spent time there, or anyone else, owes a debt of gratitude to thank you, you, Peter. So thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Congressman Hanna, for those words, and also for the great work you've done in the Congress particularly on this bill, and believe me, we are going to miss you uh, more than you know. And maybe it doesn't mean that much to you. It means a lot to us you're going to be gone. So really, uh, Richard, thank you. And again, thank you for the kind words. It means a lot. Senator Menendez, uh, Bob and I got elected to uh, Congress together. He's now moved on to the Senate, and it's good to see you, Bob. I know you guys live in a very, like the House of Lords over there, and <laughs> it's, it's good you're spending time with us poor guys over here, you know. But, no, actually, Bob is a real advocate. I know the, uh, how zealous he is, how strongly he feels about this. And again, I want to commend him. Uh, Bill Pascrell and I have worked together many years with the Homeland Security Committee together for a number of years, and I'm co-chair of the uh, uh, Fire Caucus, and it means so much. And Jerry Connolly has just walked in. And Howard Shaperg was here today. I uh, have to say that uh, when we did go through the Zadroga Act, and it was tough and it was easy for people, if they wanted to, to take partisan shots or if they wanted to somehow make it a party issue, Harold made sure it never was that. 
Uh, he made sure it was nonpartisan, bipartisan, that all of us worked together, that we stood together as one, and it could not have passed without the work that, that Harold did. Really, uh, I, I know maybe it's an unusual word to use in terms of Harold, but he was actually a calm, reassuring influence. I know he's not always calm, and I know that uh, he can uh, get himself going, but on, seriously, on Zadroga, he was a steadying influence, and he just kept it moving until the ball got across the finish line. So I want to thank him. I also want to thank him for the fact that he allows me to come to these events. My father was a cop, but he has not a whole lot against me. He said, well, that's me. Uh, <laughs> and most of all, let's thank the firefighters who are here today, uh, the men and women who put their lives in the line. I'm going to make this very brief. I'm going to end it now. Other than to say that all of us knew for years uh, the courage it takes, the, uh, uh, the bravery it takes to charge into a burning building. We realized the threat that came from the flames. We realized the threat that came from the smoke. And we thank God there were men and women who were willing to do that. And really, it was not probably until recently that enough people realized that the silent killer was the uh, carcinogens that were in the air. And maybe 9-11 is what brought that out the most. But the fact is, long before 9-11 and after 9-11, those carcinogens, many of them will still be there. It could be an ordinary house fire. It could be a factory fire. It could be an uh, underground fire in a, uh, a train tunnel, whatever it happens to be. Every time a firefighter goes in, there's no such thing as a simple fire. And certainly, it's so important to have this cancer registry because, uh, again, doctors and scientists are finding out more and more, as we saw through 9-11, the rare types of cancers and blood disorders that can be caused by these carcinogens. So again, thank you for the work you do. Richard, thank you for introducing this in the House, Bob, and the Senate. And we have to pledge to get this done because it's essential. We're talking about the lives of brave men and women who are doing for us. And the least we can do is stand with them. So thank you very much. And now, pleasure to introduce from the great state of Virginia, the fighting Irishman, Jerry Connolly. <laughs> Thank you so much, Peter. Uh, it's great to be with you today. Um, you know, uh, first nine years of my career, uh, Harold and I have something in common. We both come from Fairfax County, where he founded our local union, uh, and I worked with them uh, and supported them. Uh, and they emerged to become one of the most powerful and influential uh, groups of organized labor in our community, and for good reason. Um, I shared a, a fire station with those men and women. Uh, my office was at Fire Station 30 in Merrifield, Virginia, and I was there on 9-11 when our guys were back up to Arlington for uh, the second worst terrorist attack in American history at the Pentagon. Uh, and they were exposed to all kinds of carcinogens and chemicals, and yet uh, they went in harm's way to save others' lives. And I saw over the years the illnesses our firefighters were uh, subjected to from hepatitis to HIV to various forms of cancer. Uh, in Fairfax, we formed, uh, uh, on my motion, uh, a wellness clinic uh, to try to make sure that the unique needs, health needs of firefighters were addressed uh, uniquely. And that wellness center, I'm proud to say, has uh, continues uh, to flourish and has saved lives by detecting early cancers and other diseases. Uh, to which uh, our firefighters otherwise might have succumbed. I'm proud to support this bill. It's really important. You've heard that statistic from uh, Bill Pascrell about uh, we believe that our firefighters are 14 percent more likely to, uh, to uh, have cancer uh, and than the average uh, in the public. And, uh, and that's an alarming statistic. We want to know more uh, in order to be able to treat it and to prevent it. Uh, because if these men and women are willing to put themselves in harm's way, uh, on our behalf, the very least the Congress of the United States can do is to make sure we've got their backs. Thank you so much for having me here today. Oh, I'm introducing Harold Chaseberger, <laughs> the president of the union who started in Fairfax County. God bless you, Harold. Okay, thanks, Jerry. Thank you very much. And, uh, uh, let, me, uh, let me just start by saying how privileged I am to be here, uh, just simply as part of a leadership team representing 300,000 plus now of the very, very best that our country has to uh, offer to our communities, uh, the men and women of uh, the fire service, the men and women of the IFF, and uh, so many of them uh, here with us this morning from Washington, D.C., Virginia, Maryland. Um, it's nothing but a privilege and an honor for me to just to be a, a part of them. I want to... Uh, certainly, uh, Jerry, thank you for, where did Jerry leave already? Right. Uh, where are you? Well, there you are, okay. I thought Peter was standing there for a second. 
Uh, we, we do go way back, but I appreciate your support over, over the years in so many capacities. You've understood the importance of our profession and, and the work that uh, those that are sworn to uh, protect our communities, the work they do. Um, I also want to extend a, a, a thanks to uh, Congressman Hanna, uh, Bill Pascrell for being the chief sponsors of, uh, of the bill. Uh, I'm very thankful that we've gotten a number of uh, co-sponsors just in a very short amount of time, 69 I believe now in the House and growing. I want to uh, certainly uh, thank uh, our good friend Senator Bob Menendez who's been with us and supporting our efforts in so many ways for so long, along with Lisa Mikowski, uh, a great uh, senator from the state of Alaska who's been a, a terrific friend to our profession, our industry if you will. And certainly uh, to Chuck Schumer, who's, uh, who ha has left this, this morning, but, uh, but a great leader uh, in our Congress, and I know is going to be a great leader I'm looking forward to uh, in the next Congress. You know, it sometimes surprises uh, people in general when we tell them that the uh, most dangerous threat to the health and safety of firefighters is not really uh, crawling down hallways in fires or extricating uh, victims uh, out of cars or doing the specialty high angles and swift water rescues, all the work that they do. But the fact is that it comes from, and Peter, did I miss you? I, I oh, thought I, you. That's why I'm leaving. Listen, no, 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 no. You know what? I mean, Congressman King, you're talking about a good friend and a, and a constant friend. And you mentioned Zadroga. Everything you said, that was very nice. But actually, it's only partially true. The Zadroga Act right now is providing protection to the thousands and thousands of workers who worked in rescue, recovery, you know, and clean up on that pile to south end of Manhattan because of your leadership and your work. You never said stop. You never said no. Most of the pundits said we couldn't get it done and the environment in this Congress, and you never took your eye off the ball. You've been a great friend to us, but it's all workers. Thank you for what you did. Um, it's been said that, you know, every day, uh, the men and women of the fire service, they are being exposed to, you know, the toxins, the smoke, the debris, the chemicals, the carcinogens. Um, it is that silent, deadly uh, uh, injury, if you will, that turns into a deadly injury that's sometimes hard to measure and hard to, to see. Uh, and it comes after years of exposure, day after day, and over the years of their career. And while they, uh, we've improved their turnout gears, we've improved their self-contained breathing apparatus, we have them in hoods, we really try to protect them with the best uh, in equipment that we continue to build on. Uh, the fact of the matter is it only does so much because we know we're getting exposed through their necks and their wrists and their mouth. Um, the fact of the matter is they're getting exposed in their rigs where uh, so much of that uh, is... Uh, uh, left uh, by the result of their turnouts in those seats and jump seats. Um, and the science is uh, more than been definitive that proves that, uh, that we know what's really happening. And the fact is uh, that the studies are showing that uh, our rates of cancer in the fire service are much higher than the general populations. That we have cancers, melanoma, and brain, and leukemia, and prostate, uh, kidney, lung. We have cancers that is clear science uh, that shows that this is after an accumulation of exposures over a person's career. And a 2013 study by NIOSH found, as been stated, uh, firefighters experience 14 percent higher risk of dying from cancer than the general population. Uh, this is a huge problem. It's a huge uh, incident. It's uh, one that we're working on but we are so proud that the uh, Congress of the United States and the leadership uh, in our nation's uh, uh, government now sees the need to establish a registry so we can begin to do additional scientific studies and, and to build on the work that's already been accomplished to be able to then have the protocols and the training and change the gear, uh, you know, and the policies that uh, our members are following in order to protect them even better. So I celebrate uh, the 69 members of the House uh, with your leadership and uh, 14 members of the United States Senate uh, with your leadership, and I'm sure that will grow in order to establish the Firefighter Cancer Registry Act. And I think it can be done. You know, we're in a place, um, I, I am who I am. We're in a place where a lot criticize that very little can get done. 
that people are willing to say no more times than they're willing to say yes. Uh, that partisan bickering uh, sometimes gets in the way of progress. Uh, but the fact is, I've also watched an incredible Congress and leadership on both sides of the aisles that is able to come together and do the important work, like passing the Zadroga Act. And I believe that that is exactly what we're going to see with the Firefighter Cancer Registry Act. I think we're going to continue to build on that support, and I think we're going to see both sides of the aisle come together to do the right thing on behalf of those that do such incredible work on behalf of their communities. And I'm also so proud to have here Mike, as I believe Mike, Mike Run is going to step up to the plate. You know, you're talking about someone with a fire service background, someone with a IAFF union background, but someone who also uh, has fought his cancer and has jumped right back into duty. Uh, and it's that kind of metal, if you will, uh, that exhibits uh, exactly what our profession is all about and quite selfishly what this union is all about. And uh, so, Mike, I, I just want to thank you for your leadership and, uh, and you really helping to show the way. The men and women of the fire service, you know, know they've selected a career that comes with risk. And they accept those risks. But the risk of cancer is one that they shouldn't have to accept. And so we're here to stand with uh, our leadership uh, in the Congress to make sure this registry is a critical step forward and beginning to provide the answers and ultimately the true diagnostics and treatment uh, that those men and women uh, that serve their communities uh, are entitled to. Um, and with that, it's uh, my uh, pleasure to introduce the president of the Maryland State Professional Firefighters, uh, but also my brother, uh, Mike Run. Hello, and thank you all for being here. My name is Michael Rund, and I'm a lieutenant with the Howard County Fire and Rescue Department. I've completed nearly 29 years of service, and I have to tell you, there's not a more rewarding, more satisfying career in the world than being a firefighter. I absolutely love what I do. And if you ask any firefighter, I'm sure they will all tell you the same thing. Everyone who becomes a firefighter is aware of the potential for danger. Our turnout gear contains a warning that, quote, firefighting is an ultra-hazardous, unavoidably dangerous activity. And we know that we may be seriously injured or even killed as a result. It is the reason I've always made a point to tell my wife and kids, I love you, each day before I go to work. Despite the danger of our occupation, we take the risk every day knowing that we have been properly trained and having the faith that our training will keep us safe. I've been through more training than I can remember in my 29 years, and by and large, it has helped keep me safe. However, there is one thing no training can compare you for, the words you have cancer. I was 48 years old when I heard those words. And I'm not ashamed to say, I say I cried. I was scared, as I'm confident anyone is that would get that diagnosis. You run through the gamut of emotion when you hear those words, and then the questions start. How bad is it? Can I keep working? Is it going to kill me? How can this happen to me? After my diagnosis, reality set in and it was time to discuss treatment. We faced an onslaught of doctor's visits to determine just how bad it was and how much of the prostate was affected. I faced more anxiety and questions as I decided whether to treat with radiation or prostate removal, knowing that no matter what I decided, each would have side effects and lifelong implications. I will forever have to see a doctor to make sure it is not spread. However, today I'm lucky. It has been four years since I've completed my treatment and I'm currently cancer free. Yeah. <laughs> Over the years, there have been great advancements in the fire service to enhance our personal protective equipment, but it's not enough. We do everything possible to mitigate risks on the fire ground but how do we mitigate the risk of cancer? After returning from a call as I wash up, I still look down and watch the black water circle down the drain. The water, black from soot that's been on my skin for the last four hours. Soot that I've been breathing since I took off my mask. Particles I've ingested as I wipe my face. When I think of the chemicals I've been exposed to over the years, I don't just worry for myself. I worry for all the fellow brothers and sisters 
and know we are just beginning this battle. I'm here before you today because I'm lucky, but how many others are not? The research into the correlation between firefighting and cancer is still new and evolving. We owe it to our firefighters nationwide to put forth resources possible to understand this link and reduce the incidences of cancer. That is why I'm here to support and urge Congress to enact the Firefighter Cancer Registry. This registry will provide researchers the necessary data to understand this tragic epidemic. Our firefighters risk it all to protect our citizens. It's time we work to protect them in return. Thank you. I want to introduce a good friend of mine, Brian McQueen, a gentleman who spends his nights and weekends. Uh, uh, president, he was a uh, fire chief, as I indicated, a Whitesboro Fire Department near me, a cancer survivor who uh, seeks to help other firefighters and EMT people, virtually anyone in uh, public safety uh, with his knowledge and his experience. And uh, we're, we're fortunate to have you here, so thank you. Thank you very much, Congressman. Just a great guy that we're, we're truly going to miss. As the Congressman said, my name is Brian McQueen. I'm a past chief of the Whitesboro Volunteer Fire Department. I'm currently their safety officer. And that's in central New York. And I've been a volunteer and firefighter for 39 years. And I serve as the director of the Firemen's Association of the State of New York on the board of the National Volunteer Fire Council. I also serve as their co-chair to the National Volunteer Fire Fighter Cancer Task Force. And I sit as a member of the National Firefighter Cancer Alliance Committee. On December 24th, 2013, I got the same words you have cancer. I was diagnosed with B-cell lymphoma, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, which I contracted due to perpetual exposure to carcinogens over nearly four decades of service as a volunteer firefighter. I'm happy to say that today my cancer is in remission. The panel of five oncologists confirmed that my cancer diagnosis is linked to my passion to help others as a volunteer firefighter. In 2015, I developed an educational program to educate the firefighters, as the congressman said. And it was through one of those educational programs that congressman attacked, that attended in the fall of 2015 in his home department in Barneville, New York, that we had a stimulating conversation about the need to collect more comprehensive data about the incidents of firefighter afflicted with cancer, both on the career and on the volunteer side. A few months later, Congressman Hanna, a very close friend of our county's fire service in Oneida County, introduced the Firefighter Cancer Registry Act along with Congressman Pascrell, and on behalf of the National Volunteer Fire Council and the entire volunteer fire service of this great country, I would like to personally thank the Representative Hanna, Pascual, Senators Mendez, Murkowski, and all of the House and Senate sponsors that you heard from today and their co-sponsor for support of this critical legislation. For decades, Studies have shown a link between firefighters and the increased risk for several major cancers. As we have learned about this issue, several things have become very clear. There are behaviors in the fire service that we need to change as firefighters to protect ourselves from the exposure of the 84,000 chemicals found in fires today. Researchers and public health officials need more comprehensive data to help them study firefighter cancer. It is especially important that data on cancer among volunteer firefighters is collected as well. I am extremely pleased that the Firefighter Cancer Registry Act includes a focus gathering data on incidences of cancer among the groups that are underrepresented in current firefighter cancer databases, including volunteers, women, and minorities. To many of our brothers and sister firefighters, we continue to be diagnosed with occupational cancer. Passage of this bill will give us the critical information to formulate new strategies for protecting firefighters from cancer. And on behalf of the National Volunteer Fire Council, I would once again like to thank the sponsors of this bill for their leadership and urge Congress to pass this legislation as soon as possible. In closing, I love helping others as a volunteer firefighter, but never did it cross my mind that the job of becoming a volunteer firefighter and the job that I was doing protecting my residents was actually killing me. I did not volunteer to get cancer. Thank you. Thank you um, if there are any uh, questions, we're happy to answer them now. Joanne, please. Oh, I'm sorry. Joanne, please. Thank you. Ron, right? Yes, sir. Nice to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning. 
On behalf of the 11,000 members of the International Association of Fire Chiefs, I would like to thank Congressman Richard Penna and Congressman Bill Pascrell for introducing legislation to create a National Firefighter Cancer Registry. This legislation would create an important resource for researchers looking to understand and prevent growing occurrences of cancer among our nation's firefighters. The IFC also likes to thank Senator Bob Menendez, excuse me, Menendez and Senator Lisa Murkowski for introducing similar legislation in the Senate which would create a national database for firefighters diagnosed with threatening diseases. The IAFC endorses creating the National Firefighter Cancer Registry and urges concert, con Congress to pass the legislation this year. There is an overall high risk of cancer among firefighters. Research has shown that there are significant increases in risks of cancers such as colon, prostate, intestine, lung, bladder, kidney, and other organs of firefighters. For some cancer, the risk relative to the general population can be 229% higher. However, more research had needs to be done to better understand the increased cancer risk among firefighters and how to reduce it. Again, the IFC thanks Congressman Hanna and Pascrell and Senators Menendez and Murkowski for their leadership on this important issue. Cancer is a daily concern of many firefighters and especially our retired firefighters, and it must be addressed nationally. And we look forward to working with Congress on this to pass this legislation this year. Thank you. Thank you. If there are any questions, we're happy to answer them now. Congressman? Um, Let's go. Uh, I'm just curious what the likelihood is of this bill being done this year. <laughs> well, let me. The largest caucus in Congress is the Firefighters Caucus. And think about this. Like everyone has a postman, everyone has a firefighter in their community who's willing to get out of bed day and night to do their job regardless of the risk. And um, it would be a amount, in my mind, to criminal neglect for anyone not to support this because these people support us. So we're, we're confident. Uh, and uh, Congressman? I, I just think the Congress, many in the Congress are so hungry to get something passed to show that we do work, that we are at the best of, we are at the best of times to do this. And so we're putting every effort we can. From the very beginning, Richard uh, will verify this. We said we're going to do this. We're not just, this is not feel good legislation. We got enough of that. We got, got 5,000 bills. This is not feel-good legislation. I don't, I don't believe in that kind of stuff. I try to deal with things that I think I can affect. I know Rich feels the same way. So this is serious business. You don't play around with grief by playing political games. It doesn't work. So we're anxious to get this done. And it's also very low cost, $2.5 million between uh, when it's enacted and estimated to uh, 2021. And if you think about it, the cost savings from this um, can be in the bil billions of dollars over time uh, from what we learned from this registry. So, uh, there, so there is no negative side to this. There's no reason why someone shouldn't support this. Anything else? Can so, I add uh, yeah, go ahead. two cents to this? From our perspective, we have watched a Congress when both sides of the aisle recognize the importance of an issue related to our industry where we passed the SAFER Act and funded a program that saved 14,300 jobs. We watched the Congress pass the AFG grant that provide the equipment and the apparatus and the breathing apparatus uh, to be worn by firefighters. We talked about the Zadroga Act, which most thought would be a much too big of a lift. We're very com confident that uh, particularly with our approach and watching friends and leaders on both sides of the political aisle that can and do come together, and I believe this is a prime example of a bill where they are and will come together, and I think we'll see it succeed before this Congress adjourns. So what would the two and a half million dollars pay for? Would it be just a database, but not medical exams? What, 
what does this now cover and what does it cover? Well, this is an anonymous database, right? So if someone dies of cancer, they're a firefighter, they, they have an opportunity to register it. They don't have to. We're assuming most people will want to. Um, and as far as the money goes, it's just to reimburse the CDC for their expenses, I'm, I'm assuming, but I can get back to you, Brian. So no new studies, you're not paying for any medical research out of this? Or? No. No, but there are studies going on right now uh, at the private universities and uh, CDC. Um, we're trying to work with all of those, as with any registry, as with any registry, because this is a popular thing right now. It gives us a lot of data as to where we should be going, and maybe we should change directions about protecting and then rehabbing. So uh, I'm very confident that, about this legislation. It's going to help a lot of people. It takes some time to build up numbers enough to be uh, statistically understandable and derive what we Would want to derive Would this database become used by the folks who are doing the, the ROGA 9-11? Uh, yeah, there, a lot of work has come out of the hospitals, uh, Beth Israel um, uh, in, uh, in New York, and I know we've been using that data, uh, and our firefighters have, in order to change programs. Uh, so that we can protect people and not simply give them. Gear is not enough uh, in this job. Gear is not enough. So what we want to do is make sure that the firefighter is equipped, know what the signs are to speak up. You know, many of us are in situations we don't want to speak up because we're super people. We're not. We're human beings. We're affected by a lot of our jobs. <clears throat> we're affected by the environment. And so we want people to come forward so that the registry means something and it's not a sporadic attempt, a sporadic attempt to get some information. Is there any new federal mandate uh, reporting requirement of, of deaths? Uh, In this legislation? Yeah. Well, it, 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 hopefully if we get the, if the legislation passed, we will pass that in terms of the rules for the bill. Um, I, I think that would be very, very important if we just if this is just a volunteer situation, then you have to question the, the data, the database itself. And that's what, that's what happened uh, with the traumatic brain injury uh, and what our troops, uh, it, it, we didn't follow through. So we need um, a baseline and we need, when, a, when one of our firefighters is not feeling well, it's something to compare it to, we will, we will use that protocol. We'll use that protocol. And the IAFS supports mandatory reporting? Well, what we are supporting right now, and this, and this registry will be integrated with it, is that we are part of the fire service community building a new database called NFORS. And in that database will be an exposure reporting element for firefighters on every single call <laughs> to be filling out a, an exposure portion of their reporting requirements. And that data would then be used with the cancer registry data to be able to hopefully show the path, the connection between expand, uh, exposure, number of exposures related to uh, experience uh, of cancer itself. So you're already building a data. <coughs> we are building a data. Yeah, in, in legislation we passed in 2000, the FIRE Act, and the President referred to it before, uh, there was there was a lot of attention paid to played uh, paid to uh, health issues, wellness issues, physical education. Uh, uh, this was part of that the Fire Act, and we it, we felt it was the beginning of what we're we're showing here. This is by no means the end, and that's very important to protect our firefighters. We 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 have said time and time again that that was. We're going to help firefighters. We're going to we're going to help them in a way that will protect their lives. Or else, you know, we're just feeling good about what we're saying in the legislation. Thank you. Sorry, just quickly, do you have any sense of how this would get done? Do you expect it to be standalone, or do you think it has to be attached to some kind of mass? Well, in in, in this place, uh, you know, who knows what will be in the final bill of the year. Um, I'm speaking from experience. I'm not making it. You can't make this stuff up, you know. <laughs> and uh, we hope this could. St we believe it can, can stand alone, but if that's what it takes to get it passed, so be it. 
I want to thank everyone for being here today. If there are no further questions, especially the men and women behind me who've shown up today, thank you for what you do. Uh, we're all grateful. I'm sure your communities are grateful. Would you like the last word, sir? Well, I don't After know. You. You, 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 that's a very dangerous thing. My members know to give me the last word. But uh, no, <clears throat> I'm just going to the last word is uh, thank you for your leadership. Um, you know, the, the work that these men and women and, and all of them across a great country do, I don't want to say it's taken for granted, but sometimes there's not a real connection. What are they really doing when you see the lights and sirens go by? And they're exposing themselves, and they really do put themselves on the front line. And I think uh, Congress has shown over time the ability to recognize that service to help provide the resources they need. This is another critical component to keeping them healthy, allowing them to go home after their shifts, and, uh, and, and enjoy a retirement after service to their community. So our last word is, you know, we're going to be working hard to get all the noise out of the way, find the path that we've been able to show we can do together and, um, and have this legislation become law before the end of this Congress. Thank you. Thank you.